next part of the tutorial. So in the previous class we have learned about this uh, delta method like aerodynamic parameter estimation using delta methods where I have talked about uh, the architecture adopt adopted by delta method which was feed forward neural network and uh, you also got to learn how neural network works and how it is being trained and uh, then uh, it, uh, like how to use for the delta method. So just quickly revise like what we learned in previous class. So as I said like it mimics our biological neuron neurons. So if you see the architecture of single neurons it was like this. So it had some bias inputs with certain weightage, right? So this is your bias. And you can have a different input x1, x2, x3 and there you need to sum all those and then it should pass through a nonlinear activation function. Nonlinear activation function. And it could be your any kind of sigmoidal function, 10 sigmoidal log and uh, logarithmic sigmoidal or it can also be a linear, simple linear function. Right. So this is the, this figure talks about your artificial neuron I should write here, so artificial So this is the architecture of your single neuron. This whole thing is a single neuron. Yeah. So you have the inputs and associated weights also will be there, W1, W2, W3, and bias, let us say B. And then you have to sum all the effects, and then you have to pass to the nonlinear activation function then then you will get here H output, right? So uh, what what we did like uh, all the solution now depends on the complexity of, complexity of the problem. So every kind of nonlinearity can be captured by using a suitable nonlinear activation function. So that's why ANN is also called universal approximator, which can approximate any kind of nonlinearity. So activation function which we discussed was uh, let us say f of y and it is 1 minus lambda y divided by 1 plus e to the power minus lambda lambda y and here uh, now uh, you can see uh, here you can also modify this nonlinear uh, activation function with the lambda parameter means you have the control on the function with this parameter so this is called lambda is called n Here uh, you have the flexibility of selecting this activation function. So this is basically 10 sigmoids. Okay. And then with that uh, activation function, once you got this uh, output from the neuron, so then now it will propagate to the next neuron if it had some other layers, right? So that is how we understood. And then. Uh, the get, getting the neural network model is about assigning a appropriate weightage or right weightage and bias. So with that, you can have a uh, defined neural network model, right? And the learning learning of this model uh, can be done using this uh, back propagation algorithm, which we have discussed earlier. So it is based on steepest uh, descent method. So if you see this uh, back propagation algorithm, which is based on your stiffest descent method 
there you saw how the operation of weight is done. So it was basically your W of suppose you want to update weight like this. So it is K plus one is instant weight. Was okay. W K. Or uh, here uh, it depends on like how you are selecting your error function. So you can also like like, like this. So do or D E by D W. Right. This weight. And then suppose your error is becoming constant for some reason, then to improve that you can add this momentum parameter with W k minus W of k minus 1, 1 W of k minus 1, 1 previous step, 1 step back again. Yeah. So this is you know uh, learning parameter. So it decides your convergence of output and this is momentum which improves the uh, result momentum. Parameter. Okay. When it is used, when your error versus suppose in this case here it is constant. So in this case, your d w by d, uh, d e by d w term, uh, gradient uh, term will be zero. So that uh, in that case, it will alone it will not be able to update. So that you need additional term of momentum parameter where you will get the updated weightage. Yeah. So this is what we learned. And once you have the trained network with the help of your input and an output, let us say this is. Input and so in our example, we will make it CL, CM as output and then alpha, delta E, QC by 2 e. These are our input. Okay. Input is the output. Now you got this model which was earlier black box. You got this model which was earlier black box as fit forward neural network based model. You got a trained model. Okay. So this part we have done now. So for the delta method what is suggest like you now start perturbing the input. So uh, suppose if I want to find C and alpha then you perturb alpha in both the directions. So corresponding to that you will see the responses in C L like suppose for positive perturbation is C L plus and for negative perturbation is C L minus then twice of the perturbation actually in both the directions. So you will get C L alpha like this. So other variables also like C L delta E, C M delta E, uh, if you perturb C, uh, delta E by delta delta E, then you will see the changes in force and moment coefficients. You can write uh, like this and you will get that. So uh, now the whole uh, heart of this uh, method is about getting this model F F N N best model feed forward based neural network model. So uh, just to make it simple you can also use this uh, toolbox which is available in MATLAB uh, software. So just I will demonstrate uh, in a simplistic way so that uh, you can actually model this uh, once you have the flight data available with, uh, in, the, in the form of alpha delta EQC by 2B and CL and CM. Then I will tell you how to design this uh, network model and then you can use this uh, method to estimate your parameters like the L alpha quota itself. So I'll and then later I'll just explain you or I'll demonstrate uh, with the help of Hansa 3 data, uh, which I said like I'll be talking about examples uh, with Hansa 3 flight test data, how to estimate the parameters. Then you can see the result and then you can also try some of the different flight data to estimate the parameters on the uh, like uh, after the learning this method. Okay, so I'll start showing you the NN toolbox. So we'll learn NN toolbox in this session and then an example. Okay. So uh, as you can see in the screen, uh, this is a MATLAB software of 2014A version, right? And uh, this window is called command window. Most of you 
may be knowing it. So as I said, like uh, in this uh, section, we will be talking about this and uh, and tool, right? And then toolbox. So uh, now in hand you have the data which I have written x in hansa3 dot mat file mat file z output underscore hansa3. This is the output data for your problem. So here uh, now we have we are ready with the data uh, input data and output data. So x in is input data x out, z output is your output data. So first of all you can load this data. So once you load this data. So here in the workspace you will see it is like x in input data. Just drag and drop in command window you can see the data is loaded. Right? And further information you can see if you expand it, you can see all those information. So essentially x in is your free cross seven ninety six. Z output is your two cross seven ninety six. So what it says like uh, it means you have three input data of 796 samples, two output data, 796 samples. So these are your corresponding minimum and maximum values in the rows, and this is for your output. Now I'll be showing you about an N toolbox. So just you write an N tool here, and if you press enter, then you'll be able to see this toolbox. Yes. Okay. So here, what you can see here, you have the box for input data, and this is for target data, which is our output data. And here, you can see it is a network. So I'll just tell you how to design a network, feed forward neural network using input data and output data. So let us start loading the data. So you can load the data using this input. So basically, we are trying to import the data. So input data is our X in. So we select X in here import so here it's uh, coming like uh, variable x in has been import imported as input data into the network or data manager it means we have imported the data now target data is our output data select the output data now you can import your output data yes so now you can close this now you are able to see in input data box you have input data, target data box you have output data. Next thing is now to design a network. right? So you select a new network where you can keep the name of your own. So I will write network underscore Hansa 3. Right? So you can write Hansa 3. So since we are going to design a Hansa 3 network or example is about longitudinal so you can write L O N. So now we are trying to create a network for Hansa 3 longitudinal data. Right. Now you see the network types already we have discussed about feed forward network training is done by back propagation. So this is the structure, default structure. So you can select that or you can also try with some of the different methods which is up to your interest. Like if you want to go further you can go for other things. This is your feed forward back propagation network type. Input data already you have loaded, so you make it explain. Target data, get out. So, training algorithm, I am using the default. You just uh, for a starting purpose for beginning, you can use most of the uh, command, uh, most of the data which is already been assigned here. Default data, and uh, as I said. This number of layers talk about hidden layers, number of hidden layers. So you can take one because one hidden layer is good enough to uh, capture the complexity of such kind of problem. So this is the layer, layer number one. Now in uh, this uh, number of neurons, so you have no command over or control over number of neurons in hidden layer. Uh, as I said, number of neurons in input layer is number of inputs, whatever you have. So since we have three inputs, so default we have three neurons in input layer and we have two outputs C L and C M. So we have two output uh, three neurons in output layer, but this number of neurons is about your num uh, number of neurons in hidden layer. So default is coming ten. So if you want to change it you can change, you can take whichever number you want. So as I said like 
good to start with the default values. Let us see what happens and then this is your transfer function, activation function. So, as I said, activation can, function can be of different types. So, default is tan sigma function. Right. So, uh, let us take this tan sigma function. And now you can create your network with this values or the variables. So, create a network by clicking on create. Okay. So, now your new network called Hans network underscore Hansa C underscore lawn added to data manager since you were able to create your network, right? Okay. If you want to view your network, you can see from here. So, this is uh, what is your network look like, right? So, here you have three inputs. So, number of neurons are three input layer. Number of neurons in hidden layers, you have selected 10. So, it is 10. Output layer, you have two neurons. So, it is uh, two neurons. Okay. So, now you can close this. So, you have your network structure ready, right? So, if you want to see it, you click on it. So, this is your network fit forward neural network model. Now, you want to train your network, right? So, you go to training and train here. So, these are about the training data. So, we have to fit input is about x n and target data is your z out. So, rest of the things you do not have to do anything. Uh, uh, here you can see different uh, tabs are there, so you can explore more with your own. So let us uh, do it with uh, default data. So, I just I will train network using those data. So, now you see your network got trained and it converged in 62 iteration number of iteration you can see here. These are the information related to performance time. And if you want to check your performance, you can see it from here, right? So, let us see. So, uh, this y axis here talks about mean squared error in training data, validation data, and test data. And this dotted line talks you about the best result where your validation error came minimum for the first time, right here. So, ideally, you are network will stop here. Uh, training should be done till this, but it has taken six more values as per this augmentation of this feature here. So, blue line is about your training error in training data, green is about error in your validation data and red is about error in your test data right, and dotted line is about best performance. So, with number of iterations is called the epoch. Uh, your error is drastically changing, it is reducing to a very low value, even lower than your 10 to the power minus 4. And first time your validation error come minimum at this uh, number, maybe around 56. Yeah. This value before this, 62. And here your network is trained very well. Uh, here, what how, how it works like when you use 70 percent of the data for the training, the rest of the among rich data 15 percent for validation and 15 percent for the testing of your research. So, validation makes sure that you have not done the overfitting, so that's why 15 percent of the data which was which were not included in the training were used to check it is not overfitted. Okay. Now, you can the regression where you will get the confidence in your result like this. Yeah. So, here you can see four different boxes. First is your training, validation, test and this is about including everything, all the results. Okay. So, now, you see uh, this how well they are fitting. And the information of this fit you can get from this parameter r. So, basically uh, you understand like this r when r is 1, it means all the data samples are fitting on single line, the best fit line, right. So, r talks you about the relationship between the fit data and from the uh, observed data. So, these bubbles uh, are 
our data and this product gets fed. So here fed R value is quite high, almost close to 1. So that's the reason you can see all your data samples are able to fit on this blue line that's fit for the training. Validation also you got very uh, good result, 0 0.9997. Almost all the data samples, so as you know, we have used total 796 samples. So all the samples, almost all the samples, including few, maybe 5, 6, are out of, slightly out of this line, but reasonably good. So that's why you did not get R equals to 1. But validation, uh, R value validation search, uh, it has got a good training. And then you have tested with different data, and then you, this also says you about confidence in your train model with a very high accuracy of 0.99. That is, it could also be here, you will get the results together. Yeah. So it means now you have you are able to train uh, your model with the uh, training, and then suppose it is not, it doesn't convert in first time, you can try it doing multiple times and then you can also now see the information about the weight, weight and bias which I talked in theoretical explanation part. So you see that associated weights are here and including bias. And if you want to change the weights and bias, you want to include your own weights, you can do it independently. You can do it. So here idea is like you can explore the different features of this toolbox and then Accordingly, you can accordingly or uh, suitably you can modify as per your reserve, right? As per your requirement. Now, now uh, again, you are able to uh, create this network model. You can export it to your MATLAB file. Uh, so, this network underscore under three underscore known is about training of the network. You can export or you can also save this. So, okay, so yes, this is now there. Other thing, other information also, information on the error, you can also check and see. Okay. So, now you got this uh, network model. So, how will you test, like, suppose if you have different data? So, for that, you can write predicted output. Output. It works like this. Just I'll write you the command and then you can do it by your own simulation of. Uh, since the network name is Hansa 3, this one, so you have to write this. Just you can copy it. Okay. You write this name. And here you can give your uh, different input, right? So here I have trained this network using this input output data. So just to show you, I have shown only input output data. Suppose now you got different data from different flight, uh, not different flight, uh, different set of flight data. Yeah. So it may be X in two or something. So if you do it, uh, you can write that since we don't have uh, data available. So, if you have x in, you have tagged the name like x in 2, you can write x in 2. So, here I have, you know, suppose you want to just see the result for the same data, so you can write x in here, right? So, it will give you about the, it will give you the result for predicted output. So, now you see, you got again 796 samples of data for both the outputs, L and C and, right? Here. So this is just basically predicted. So once you have designed your network like this, then you will be able to predict the output for any inputs which is suitable to this model, right? And then once you got this predicted output like this, so what essentially you want to do now, you want to perturb the inputs, uh, X, let us say X in, uh, it contains your input information about alpha, delta E and Q C by 2 V. So you can uh, give uh, different inputs. So you can add first time maybe difference in alpha. You note down the values like you save it somewhere. Again you perturbed in the negative direction maybe X in minus 
delta alpha you keep some different wa name with uh, different variables store it and then finally from the delta method if you want to find cl alpha then it will become your predicted output for the positive perturbation minus predicted output for the negative perturbation divided by twice of the perturbed input will give you the first point cl parameter so this is what actually uh, we have done it and i'll show you the result so this was the part of uh, process and demonstration of an end toolbox so i hope you will be able to appreciate and then you can also do it by yourself so let us see aerodynamic parameter estimation using delta method so basically we have taken the same uh, data what we have used for least square estimation demonstration using some sort of data so this is the aircraft which you have seen already in earlier tutorial session with the parameters yeah. and this was your flight data which you are familiar now and if you see the input and output so it was like this so this is alpha q c by 2 we delta e c l n t m so what essentially you are seeing is you have set of input data set of output data and this is the model actually so this is your aircraft answer 3 where you are no more worried about physics of answer 3 aircraft physics of this aircraft now you are treating this as a black box model you have gathered the data from flight in terms of input sets of input and set of output data and you are trying to replicate this model using the philosophy of artificial neural network which is a very powerful method as i said it can approximate any nonlinearity. and once you have trained this model you have this now a trained model of the longitudinal data then here you can see a blue line says about the training data the data used for the training and the red line shows about a n n estimated uh, you, uh, what we did like we had trained this from the first flight, flight data set different flight data set and we have used different flight data set input to estimate the coefficient CL and CM, right, code and moment coefficient. So they are reasonably mm, well, like the matching with each other. And then, like once you apply your delta method, so I hope you are able to see this. So this is your result for all the parameters. So the parameters are here, CL alpha, CL q, CL delta e, C M alpha, C M Q and C M delta E. So this is a histogram plot with histogram information. The histogram what it says like it says you had uh, multiple data samples like uh, 796 samples. So this is this gives you the information about maximum occurrence of particular value from all the sample data. For example, if you see CL alpha plot, if you see here uh, CL alpha in CL alpha estimates, so it is close to five between five and six. So let us say five point five. So the occurrence of that value happened more than around three fifty times, right? And this value also is quite prominent. The next value. Like that, you can see the all the estimates, occurrence of all those estimated parametric values for how many times it occurred. And you can also take the average value. You can also select the maximum number of occurred value, which will represent your corresponding uh, C, uh, your aerodynamic parameters, right? So here it was about C, L, and C, M derivatives. You can see all the results are here. And now, if you compare this uh, with your results what you have got earlier using this square method so these are the results presented here delta method estimates for longitudinal parameters using answer 3 aircraft flight data okay so you see here you have cl alpha clq cl delta e cm alpha cmq and cm delta e estimated parameters using delta methods and using this square methods so if you see they are reasonably in the agreement 
the CL alpha 5.788 you got from the uh, eta meters and then 5.411 you got from the disk meters. Uh, here your strong parameters are CL alpha, CM alpha, CM delta E and CL delta E. So those strong parameters are in quite good shape and then you have done it from flight data. Further this then you can improve, you can uh, apply for the different sets of data, you can see the accuracy in the result and performance and I, as I said deriva Q derivatives CLQ and CMQ uh, were not very much in agreement because of the nature of the data so maybe you can design a better input uh, here we have applied only 3 to 1 1 so if you want to get those dynamic derivatives then you should uh, capture the more dynamic maneuvers, non-linear maneuvers where your Q will be quite excited where you will see the significant changes in this rate in the derivative and uh, from there you can get better estimates of CLQ and CLQ. So this was the idea of just to introduce you with this delta method using flight data. Now you can gather different sets of data, you can use this algorithm and you can look for a better result what is being presented here. I think it should be good enough to understand you and to start uh, for uh, new uh, flight data sets. So I talked about the procedure like how do you how do you design this network and then from the network by using delta philosophy of delta method how to estimate the parameters. So I think this is all for this session. You can practice more, you can come up with your own ideas and methods. See the comparison of your results. Thank you so much.